Hey everyone, in my last video on purifying uh, over-the-counter reagents, I distilled dichloromethane from Paint Stripper. Um, and in that video, I said that there's always going to be a little bit of methanol present because that's part of the Paint Stripper. Uh, so that's going to carry over in the distillation. What I've since found out is that methanol and DCM actually form an azeotrope. So there's definitely going to be uh, methanol and a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. So what I'm going to do is remove the methanol from the DCM uh, using the water wash method that I, I mentioned in, the, in that video. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to make up some test solutions just to show that I've actually gotten rid of the methanol. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use potassium dichromate. And I have three test tubes here, and we're going to be doing three separate tests. One before uh, the water wash, one after, and a control just using ethanol just to show what it does. So this particular test, like I said, is potassium dichromate. And it's, you can see it's an orange solid, but when you get it into solution, it actually makes a yellow solution. So in each of these test tubes, I have, uh, you know, a couple hundred milligrams uh, of the solid, which is really all you need. You don't need a lot for this test. Uh, and to this, well, I'm going to put that into solution, and I'm going to add a small amount of dilute uh, sulfuric acid. And that's going to make up my testing solution for alcohols. So this is, this is the test for alcohols, or actually primary and secondary alcohols. Um, so what's going to happen is we'll end up with these uh, nice yellow solutions. And when I put the DCM in it, if it's got any methanol in there, uh, it should turn these solutions green because methanol is a primary alcohol. Primary and secondary alcohols in this test will turn the solution green, um, and tertiary alcohols will not. Uh, so there, I really shouldn't have any tertiary alcohols anywhere in this, so if it does change colors, then that means I've got methanol still present, and if it doesn't, that means I've gotten rid of it. Okay, so to do this test, we need to have a warm water bath, which I've done here. The speaker is full of hot water that I've heated from my butane burner. Um, so the first test that we're going to do is the control. We're going to use ethanol, 75.5% ethanol. Uh, so it's actually ever clear. Uh, so we're going to do that in the left hand test tube. And you don't really need a lot. We'll just put in half a milliliter or so. And ethanol is a primary alcohol, so this should change its colors. And of course, it's miscible in water, so it mixes nicely. So we'll stick this in the warm water bath for a second. You can see it's already starting to change colors. This is kind of a slow process on its own, so you really need to to heat it up quite a bit to, to see. But uh, we can already compare it to the original color and you can see that it's quite a bit darker. It's on its way to green. So now we'll perform the same test uh, with some freshly distilled dichloromethane. So again we're just going to take a small amount of that and add it to the test tube. And this is going to be a little different because dichloromethane uh, does not mix with water. So what we're going to end up with is a little blob on the bottom. You can see it swirling around down there. Um, so that complicates things slightly, but the fact that dichloromethane boils at such a low temperature is actually going to help us out here. So as soon as I put it into the hot water bath, um, we should get some boiling. Swallow this around a bit. Occasionally it helps to poke at it with a stirring rod, and now you can see that promotes boiling. So 
So while the solution is actually boiling, or rather the, the DCM is actually boiling, but any methanol that it's got in it should stay in there. Um, and actually, well, even if it's boiling off as the azeotrope, uh, you'll get some, it, it promotes mixing between the two layers, which is going to help the test. So it took several minutes and the addition of a little bit more DCM, but uh, you can see that it's definitely changed colors now. There's also that little glob of, of DCM on the bottom of it. But you can see it's, it's definitely green, especially in comparison to the original solution. Um, and the, the ethanol one is, has turned blue, which apparently is what it eventually does. It goes to green and then to blue. Um, so that's pretty clear, I think. So we've got the control ethanol primary alcohol makes it change colors. The unwashed DCM makes it turn green and eventually blue. Uh, and so now we're going to get to the actual purification. Okay, so I've taken my DCM outside. Uh, it's in this bottle here. Uh, and we're going to put it in this SEP funnel. Everything here has been chilled in the fridge beforehand uh, because DCM has such a high vapor pressure and a low boiling point. I want to try to keep it in liquid as much as possible. So everything's cold. So i got to kind of work quickly because it's very humid and hot outside. So we're going to pour this into the SEP funnel. And then to that, add some cold water. And you can see, as before, the two layers are immiscible. So we've got the two layers there. So now what I want to do is shake this. And you do that so that everything gets mixed together nicely. And you want to vent very often with this. So I'm going to put the stopper in the top. And um, because of DCM's volatility, as soon as you start shaking it, you want to vent a lot. You can hear it coming out. After letting it sit for a few minutes, just to let the layers completely separate, uh, we again have the two layers. You can see the interfaces right about there. Um, and the DCM is going to be the lower layer because it's more dense than water. So I'm just going to drain that out into the bottle and uh, then we're going to repeat this a second time. So I'm going to rinse it a second time with water just to make sure uh, that's how I did it before and it seemed to work pretty well. So we'll do two washes and then uh, go from there. Okay, the two water washes are complete. And I've got my dichloromethane back in its bottle. Uh, so now we're going to do the final test. So again, I'll take just half a milliliter or so into a pipette and add it to the testing solution. So here's my DCM in the test solution. Uh, this is the, the rinsed DCM, so we'll put it in the hot water bath as before and uh, stir it around a little bit. And again, you can see it boil. So now we're just going to wait uh, 10 minutes or so. We'll give it just to see if it changes colors because the other one was so slow. Uh, you can see now that the, uh, the previous DCM test is completely blue. The one on the left is the ethanol control. The one on the right was the, the DCM. You can still see it and a blob on the bottom. But now they're the same color, so that's a definite positive test for the, uh, the methanol that was included in it. So it's been about an hour since I did this test, and you can see there's no color change whatsoever in the final test tube. Uh, so that tells me that I can be pretty sure that my dichloromethane doesn't have any more methanol in it. 
Now, of course, that I mixed it with water, it's going to have a little bit of water in it as well. So it's still not entirely pure. Um, and to, to get rid of the water, you would need to shake it with a, um, a desiccating agent like anhydrous calcium chloride. Um, and then for best results, you'd want to then distill the dichloromethane yet again uh, over calcium chloride. So put some calcium chloride in the pot and di distill that. That would remove all the rest of the water. That's not so much a concern for me, so I'm not going to worry about it because that's quite a bit of work. So I wanted to try one more test actually. Uh, I, I kept the rinse water from the purification step, uh, and so I figured I might as well test that for methanol just to show you for sure that the methanol went into the water. So we'll add some of that to our testing solution. And put it in the hot water bath. You can see there's a little bit of a color difference between this and the uh, the final dichloromethane solution, and that's that's just the difference in concentration. You know, you see it's a slightly darker orange. That's just because I use slightly more uh, potassium dichromate in that one. So it's been about 20 minutes, and the color has indeed changed to this greenish color, and uh, that proves that there's methanol in the water in the wash water. So that shows that it works. And it actually took that long, I, I assume because there's so little methanol that's actually present. I, I thought initially the reason that this one took so long um, was because the DCM doesn't mix with water, so it was just hard to mix the two phases. But apparently there's just not a lot of methanol present to begin with. So as a review, on the left we've got ethanol, the control, which changed the color of the solution. Um, before the water rinse, my, my dichloromethane, which changed the color because of the presence of methanol. Uh, after the water rinse, the dichloromethane has not changed colors, showing that we've gotten rid of the methanol, and the wash water from the rinse showing where the methanol has went. Thanks a lot for watching.